Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the scaffolding off of a new 3D print. I went ahead and already printed my model. As you can see, I did a dragon. It's I didn't model this myself. This was by Dutch Mogul off of Thingiverse. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description below if you want to download and print this for yourself as well. And then you can follow me along in this video for how to remove the scaffolding. Because I know in the last post I went over a lot on how to finish the prints after you do this step. So we'll, we'll go ahead, do this one, and then I can also link in the description below um, the post for what to do after the removal of the scaffolding and any of the other access stuff on here. So as you can see, you can also have, have a lot of webbing in here. That's probably because of some of my print settings. Um, I tried out some different print settings yet last night. I let this print overnight, so I'll have to fix that for next time. But I thought I would go ahead and use this as an example anyway for how to remove the scaffolding. So I do have a piece of glass here for cutting, but you know, if you have a cutting mat or something uh, different, it would probably work better. I'm just using a piece of glass from a picture frame that I don't use anymore since I don't have a nice cut mat. Um, and then I just have some different pliers. Um, I like to use the needle nose and the regular uh, pliers a lot. And of course the X-Acto knife for getting it nice and up close. And I also have some different wire cutters that are kind of um, wire cutters that are right at the front. So those come in handy too. And I do have the file set, but I don't think I'll get into sanding today. But I would like to have a container nearby to put the plastic scraps in since one day I hope to make a filament recycler so I can make my own filament for 3D printing so I like to keep my scrap PLA instead of throwing it away so if you do that then make sure your containers nearby too so first things first I usually like to go ahead and feel the pressure oh this one breaks off right away so with my hands first I'll go in and see what just breaks off pretty easily and get that stuff really quickly. Um, some of the stuff that gets a little bit tighter and more uh, in between, I'll go back and do with the pliers afterward. So try to get the loose stuff first just to start that cleanup process for your models. This is the easiest way I find to start before I jump in with pliers. Unless of course it's a bigger piece Sometimes I'll start right away with some pliers because if it's really big, like pieces that are this size, instead, pliers are probably going to be easier to use than your hands anyway because the scaffolding is so much bigger. And of course, it depends on how intricate your print is, too. And when I use the pliers, I like to go ahead and twist it and then go back and forth as well. Is a nice, easy way to start getting the scaffolding removed from your model. I'm sure there's other people that have different techniques as well. So find what's most comfortable for you and also what types of prints that you print out just what works best. So after you get most of the scaffolding off, of course I still have some more work I could do right down here in the base by the feet and all. But I'll save that for later because I'm sure you guys get the idea by now. Pretty much just go at it with your pliers. However, for some of this, like a lot of this on the tail, that it's like just a little bit too small to clean up with the pliers and all, that's where your exacto knife comes in. Because, oh, well, actually, if you have nails, sometimes it does come off with your nails. Um, but if you don't, exacto knives work wonderfully. So you just want to get right in there. Be careful with your finger placement, of course, and just scrape those right off. Kind of like if you're familiar with Reaper miniatures, when it comes in 
having those seams from their molds in and you just go in really carefully fixing up those seam lines very very similar to that it's just little nubs of plastic rather than seams of plastic so sometimes you might get a little sawing motion in there just be very careful and this part can also take quite some time you also want to do that for these little threads that sometimes you can get when your printer has to move around a lot like this model probably would print better in sections and then glue together uh, it would just probably be a lot easier on the printer but I wanted to just see kind of push the limits of my printer see what it could do since it updated the software recently um, so yeah with these little fine hair like pieces of plastic that's also a good place to use this exacto knife so the printer obviously didn't print the horns very well I'll we'll probably have to play with those settings but I'm not gonna waste this dragon he's probably just gonna be a little bit more beat up and scarred but it will still work really well for D&D I know the description for what a uh, Dutch mogul made him for was a forest dragon but I went ahead and printed it in a blue plastic because I wanted it to be more water related since it was nice and kind of flowy looking thought it would be pretty cool And same with the base as well. You can see some of the scaffolding left pieces on here. So you can also just go in to the base and scrape those off. Just wherever the scaffolding touches, make sure you at least run your finger over to make sure you can get everything off that the scaffolding left behind. Okay, but I'm probably going to go ahead and stop the video here. Um, there's not much else I want to go over in this video. Pretty much just give you guys a basic idea of what I like to do for getting the scaffolding off of models as well as using the X-Acto knife to get in there after the scaffolding, most of the scaffolding is removed and how you can use it to get in there and get the rest of it. Um, but at this point, I like to go back and forth between the pliers and the exacto knife until the uh, final model is nice and clean and then I don't think I'll have to sand this one I might but I shouldn't have to this is a pretty nice model I like this one a lot um, so I should be pretty happy with it once I get go through with the exacto knife and honestly with this plastic since it is a nice like clear type blue probably won't really want to take an, uh, a needle file to it but like I said I'll put the links in the description below if you do want to print this out um, it was free on Thingiverse but of course you can always tip the designers and then if you want to let me know what you'd like to see next time or if you want to let me know how you take the scaffolding off of your models if you guys have any different techniques that you like to use I would love to hear that in the comments below but please make sure you like subscribe uh, comment let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time